Hello everyone and welcome back. So, um, this is the 433 MHz radio project again and I'm trying to get maximum range and I'm trying to learn um, what makes the range better and uh, what makes it worse, etc. Right, this is part three of the project now and um, I've done various different things, various different tests and uh, changes to the, the circuit in my previous two videos. But in this video, um, I'm hoping to get maximum range. Hopefully this is the video where I get maximum range and good stability. Um, but to start with, I'm just going to pop over to my computer and I'll talk you through a few things. So I've spent about half an hour to 40 minutes researching RF and I've uh, found out quite a lot indeed. But one particular website which struck, struck me as being particularly useful was this one. It's called goflouis.com and it's created by a guy called Louis Goff and there's an interesting article here about uh, a comparison of four different transmitter and receiver modules and there's lots of info about different ones he scanned them in and you've got pictures and all sorts uh, graphs, how he tested and stuff to do with voltages and lots of other info so yeah what a great website and what an interesting article uh, so I thought I'd tell you about that. So if you want to have a look, uh, there you go, goflouis.com. Now, anyway, one of the things which has struck me as something I needed to do was to replace the aerial. And um, if I go to this calculator here and type in 433.92 and choose megahertz and choose quarter wave, go to calculate, it gives me a measurement. And the length of the antenna which I need is 172.84 millimetres. And then rounded up 173. And um, funnily enough, that's exactly what Cheetah Kid said in my previous video when he, um, when he written this comment for me to read. And uh, yeah, of course, he's spot on there, 173 millimetres. So I'm going to cut mine slightly longer, and that's because I need some uh, space to thread it through the actual module and then I'll snip it off um, at the other end when it's through. So anyway, so that's the measurement for that. Now something I thought I'd explain in this video, or try to, you see here it's got the um, quarter wave length, three quarters length, etc. And I've gone for quarter of a wave. So why have I gone for a quarter of a wave? Well in this uh, image here it's got a diagram or drawing of the um, uh, what's it called frequency um, not frequency ah, radiation pattern so this is the radiation pattern of different um, different uh, types if you like so this quarter wave length uh, gives this radiation pattern from the monopole uh, transmitter this radiation pattern and if you were to look at it as a 3D shape it'd be a donut shape but um, Anyway, you can see here that different uh, different types should give you different radiation patterns. And this particular one here, three eight, uh, sorry, five eighths. You can see it's got quite a lot of gain here on this side, and that's great. Gain means um, it's more focused. The uh, transmitter focuses its energy in in a certain direction. It's directional. But because I'm a complete amateur, uh, I don't really want to be messing about with all that sort of stuff. I just want to keep it simple. And therefore, I'm going to go for this quarter length monopole because it's fairly simple um, and I don't have to worry about the position too much. It's fairly straightforward. So that's why I'm going for that. There are a couple of other considerations as well, other things I've learned about this. And they are to do with power mainly. Um, power matters. And people are recommending that I don't use 12 volts. This is on forums. Um, they're recommending that I use between 9 to 10 volts. So I'm going to have to do something with that. I'll have to step down the cells because uh, if you remember rightly, I've got three 3.7 volt cells. Well, they're actually probably more than that. They're lithium ion cells and they're around about 12 volts. So I'll need to step that down or regulate it to around about 9.5, 10 volts or something like that. The other thing that that power has to be stable, um, so I may add a capacitor or whatever just to um, to make sure 
that any ripples or anything like that are smoothed out. And finally, I'll have to make some changes to the code, which I've already done here. I'll just show you. Here we go. So, what changes have I made? I've changed the speed. The reason why I've changed the speed is because lots of people are saying that the slower speed you have, the more reliable the uh, transmissions and reception is, which I suppose that makes sense, really. And not that it matters too much, I've also changed the delay. I think it used to be 200 or something like that. I've changed it to 100. So the transmissions are now every 100 milliseconds. And um, I flashed them over to the Arduinos, and now uh, let's see how it performs. So the first thing I'm going to need to do is to measure this um, new antenna out. So 173 millimeters. 100. So I'll do 183. Let's see. 183. Right. 183. 182, 183. So that's 183. And I'll get another one of those. Okay, so that's 10 millimeters too big, but that's okay. Let's just double check. 100 and put it there like that. 183, perfect. So 183, and I need 173. So I'll just make another mark at 173. One seven three. I'm going to make a mark on this one. There we go. So I've got two little marks, and now I just need to trim the insulation off. And there we go. So I should have two at uh, 173 now. One seven three. That's perfect. So now it's time to solder these on now. So, so I'll need this to help me out. And I suppose the first thing I need to do is unsolder these current ones. And put the new one in place. Let's take a look at that. Yeah, that's okay. That one soldered on quite well already. Right, and that should be all the soldering I need to do. So I'll trim these little bits off now. And here, oops. There we go. So they are our new antenna I suppose they're called. So I'll just measure them again to make sure. Right, I'll get these things over here now so I can show you. Okay, the next thing I need to do is um, 
And so I recommended that I change the capacitors. So I'm going to pull these two small capacitors out and replace them with some different capacitors. And the capacitors I'm going to replace them with are these. And these are 10 volt, 220 microfarad uh, capacitors. So I'll just push these in the correct place. Let's say here. And this one can go here. And now I think it's time to push the uh, little devices in. So I'll push the transmitter in. There we go, that's in. Right, so that's done. Now, you might see some circuitry here which I've not shown you before. And that is just here. I won't tell you exactly how I've done it or how it works because I think that's not really in the scope of this video. Needless to say though, um, I've got a voltage regulator in here a small circuit of resistors and whatever and the output is 10 volts or it should be 10 volts anyway so it's a 12 volt input and this uh, what should be 10 volt output or near 10 volts so let's just check it out so I'll bring this thing over here and I'll just show you so to start with we have 12 volts and let's try this one to make sure just under 12 volts and then um, here which is the new part of the circuit in this orange lead uh, to ground we should have yeah there you go 9.75 that's perfect and then this one 9.77 perfect right so currently I'll just move this out of the way currently the devices are running off 5 volts because that's how I left it last time but now I'm going to change them, not to 12 volts, but to the new power source. So if I disconnect the red lead from there and put in the orange lead, that should now be 10 volts. And the same here, so I'll disconnect the VCC red lead and put the orange lead instead. Oops, uh, where is it now? that pin, there we go okay now the system is running off the 9.7 volts and uh, let's just double check to make sure nothing uh, strange has happened um, orange oops, orange to ground 9.76 okay that's good and then try this one again orange to ground 9.77 perfect so now I've redone the system I've changed the code or adapted it slightly we've still got the same battery bank I've added the capacitor I've got a voltage regulator in to regulate it to 9.77 volts which is the recommended I've changed the antenna so uh, I think we're ready to go again so I'll go outside now and let's see what happens Okay, I'm back from the test, and the results were a little bit more conclusive than the last time. So, um, does the 10 volt um, power for the transmitter and receiver make a difference? Well, the answer is, in my case, it made a small amount of difference. Um, I was able to get a little bit further, but there was a bit of a, a hiccup, if you like. What I found that if you held that you got a lot further so if you got the antenna and held it about five millimeters off the top um, this is the receiver of course five millimeters off the top if I held that I got more distance if I didn't hold it there was less distance um, so the distance was um, it took me 90 steps um, or strides or whatever you want to call it um, so 90 steps and the average step is 75 centimeters or thereabouts according to Google anyway so therefore if it was 90 steps and each step is 75 centimeters it is 67 meters so apparently it seems as though um, I can get 67 meters um, 
range from these. But the problem is with that is that's holding that. Now when I don't hold that, I get less. And when I don't hold that, I get around about um, around about 60 steps, something like that, 60 something. So if I say 60, 60 multiplied by 0 0.75, that's 45 meters. So without holding it, 45 meters, with holding it, a lot more. Um, so with holding it, 67 meters. So now I've got this whip and the code changes on this capacitor. I wonder what would happen if I went back to 12 volts. So I'll take out the regulator, take the regulators out, take their supporting resistors out, and this one, and take out the white wire, take out the white wire from here, take out the green wire, and the green wire, and then put the VCC directly to the 12 volt or the 11 volts or whatever it is now so I wonder if that will make a difference okay back up to 12 volts or so um, it did make a difference but it was worse um, the range with 12 volts is around about 2 meters which is of course much worse than the 10 volts 